What's going on church fam? It's Church Life bringing y'all another video. I pray y'all are having a blessed day. So the reason why it feels like spiritual warfare has intensified in your life is because the devil wants to interrupt your progress. See, whenever we're on the right track, whenever we're on the right path, there is an interference that begins to take place by the enemy because he don't want you to step into that full character of who the heavenly father call you to be. See, when you're getting close to the destination that the heavenly father is leading you to, it will begin the process of deliverance, not just for you, but for others, because the heavenly father may use you to be an answer prayer for someone that's been seeking spiritual guidance. Someone that's been praying to the Heavenly Father for this particular deliverance from some sort of addiction or something that's going on in their lives. Because the testimony of others sometimes help someone overcome something they're struggling with. Because it allows them to understand they're not alone in whatever it is they're dealing with. So that's why the enemy will try to interfere with your progress because God may want to use you in a mighty way. So he will intensify that spiritual warfare in order for you to become discouraged, depending on how the heavenly father wants to use you. See, before Lord Jesus started his ministry, he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And when he got to a particular point of his fast, the devil tried to interfere with his progress. He tried to interrupt his momentum. And the first temptation that the enemy tried to get him with was with food. The very thing that he was lacking at that moment because he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And the words say in Matthew 4, verse 3 through 4. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. See, one of the things that I learned about the enemy, especially when you're about to enter into that place that the Heavenly Father has called you to, that place where the Heavenly Father is going to use you in a mighty way, the enemy will always use the very thing that you lack something that you need at the moment that's going to help improve your quality of life. So that's why Lord Jesus teaches in the scripture, it's important that we deny ourselves. Because when we do that, it makes it hard for the enemy to attack you with the stuff that you may need at the moment. So by us denying ourselves, we create this defense against whatever fiery dart that the enemy is trying to throw your way because we're leaving our lives in the hands of God. See, when you fully accept Lord Jesus, he becomes our defense system. He's the one who's going to give us the strength to navigate through these trials and tribulations that comes with the enemy whenever he's trying to interfere with your progress. See, Lord Jesus was hungry and in that scripture, it's displaying what it looks like when we deny ourselves. See, he could have gave in to the flesh and said, you know what? I'm going to turn these stones into bread. But if he would have did that, he wouldn't have been mentally prepared for what happened next. See, the enemy tried to make him cause harm to himself. He tried to make him trade in his salvation for stuff. He tried to make Lord Jesus sell his soul. What did he say in that scripture? I think that was the last temptation too. What did he say? Let me get to it, y'all. In Matthew 4, I'm going to read verse 8 through 11. Again, the devil take him up into an exceeding high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leave him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. 
See, when you resist the devil, he shall flee from you. And what I learned by that scripture is this. When we live in a state of lack, right? When it feels like we don't have all that we need. That's how the enemy attacks you. He attacks you through the stuff of this world, the abundance of this world. And he wants you to trade your worship to God for the stuff of this world. And he will bait you into a system that will cause you to fall into this pit that becomes hard to escape out of. And that's why I say wide is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to life. But what I also learned by reading that scripture is this. Lord Jesus fasts 40 days and 40 nights. And when the tempter came to tempt him, he resisted the enemy. And by the time he got to the last temptation and overcame the enemy with the word of God, angels came down to minister to Lord Jesus. So what that taught me is this. He also received revelation on what he needed to be doing and how it will work if he continue to trust God. See, basically, this is what I'm saying. The enemy doesn't interfere with something that he doesn't know is going to work later on. So that's why the enemy continues to attack you. He's going to try to attack you with these temptations. If you're fasting, he's going to attack you with food first. If you're on the verge of becoming who the Heavenly Father created you to be, he's going to attack your character. If you're living in some sort of lack right now and it's becoming hard to put food on the table or pay bills or keep the essentials in your life that we all need to survive, he's going to try to attack you with the abundance of the world. He's going to attack your mind, your character, and he's going to try to interfere with the path that the Heavenly Father has you on. And when he see that all of this is failing, when it doesn't work, because the Bible say, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper, he's going to try to enter into the people that you care about, people that he still can use. And this spiritual warfare may even come from people that you don't even know. But this happens whenever you're on the right path. When God is ready to do something miraculous in your life and use you in a mighty way, the devil will always try to interrupt that progress. Because he don't want you to continue this process of becoming who God said you was from the very beginning. So to make a long story short, none of these attacks that comes from the enemy are random. See, God may have chosen you to be the one that breaks generational curses that's in your family. And the more we keep going and trust in the Heavenly Father, the more we develop a testimony See, people may need to hear about the stuff that the Heavenly Father has delivered you out of. And you might be going through something right now that you think you can't overcome. See, the reason why you think you can't overcome it because of those intrusive thoughts. See, the devil is whispering in your ear saying, yeah, you won't be able to overcome this. He wants you to think that God isn't by your side. Or that God has abandoned you. But that's not the case at all. See, sometimes we go through these particular things that may feel like we can't overcome. Like addiction. Or you might be living in a household where it feels like everybody is against you. But it's really so that we build that connection with the Heavenly Father because the words say God draws near to the brokenhearted. So every single thing that the enemy tried to say against you, it's a lie. When we're brokenhearted, that's when God is the closest. God never left from by our side. He 
he's still there. He's still helping us, believe it or not. That's why we're, we're, we was able to wake up this morning to glorify God because God is still providing for us. But the enemy wants you to become depressed and say, why me, Lord? Why me? Because he wants you to question the intentions of the most high God that we serve. But the words say in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And that's in the NIV version. In the King James Version, it say, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. See, the intentions of God is to give you a prosperous life. And I ain't talking about tangible stuff. I'm talking about peace that surpasses all understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, just more clarity about why we exist. And that's to serve and glorify the name of God. Like I said, whenever you're on that path, that track that leads you toward life, that narrow way that leads you toward life, the enemy will always try to interrupt that progress, his whole plan, his whole objective is to interfere with that connection that we're building with the Heavenly Father through Lord Jesus. So that's why that spiritual warfare is increasing in your life. And the enemy will try to affect anyone that's around you that he can use in order to try to make your life miserable. And this also happens when God is about to turn your circumstances around, when God is about to bless you, when God is about to elevate you, when he's about to remove the wicked to empower the righteous. See, God considers your faithfulness to be righteous as well. When you didn't turn away from God just because this circumstance was happening, or just because these people turned on you, you still continue to believe God that he will make a way. See, that's what moves the hand of God. So as I bring this to a close, I want to read one more scripture. Psalms 55, verse 22. Cast our burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. No matter how much the enemy tries to interfere with the progress you've made with just following Lord Jesus and building a stronger connection with the Heavenly Father. No matter how much the enemy tries to interrupt that process, when you cast your burden upon the Lord, that word said what? He will sustain you and he will not suffer the righteous to be moved. God is going to provide for you and he's going to bless you in the presence of your enemies because there's people that the enemy can use that don't want to see your life become better. They don't want to see you evolve into a completely different person. They don't want you to become a new creature in Christ and find new identity. It's some people that the enemy can use that literally want to see you remain in the same stuck place that you was once at. So that's part of the reason also why the Heavenly Father will isolate us in moments of our lives. Because he don't want that of what people may try to do toward you or that environment that the Heavenly Father no longer wants you a part of. He don't want that to become a distraction in your life. So that's why the spiritual warfare will intensify in our lives at times because we're on the right track. The enemies increase the more we travel this path of righteousness, but God will always be with you. 
He will help you get through these burdens if we remember to leave it in his hands. So allow God to sustain you because he will never suffer the righteous to be moved. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all.